Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just kicked off our series, Resolve for More. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Thanks. Happy New Year. Thank you. Glad to have you back on the uh, yeah. Postscripts yeah. and today. And like so this. we talked about today, so timely, because myself, I've set New Year's resolutions. Uh, My yeah. family has uh-huh. goals and resolutions. Yeah. Um, and we talked about today that the inside matters. And we are working towards setting spiritual disciplines to take care of our soul. And um, so today we started with scripture Mm -hmm. and engaging God's word, um, which is where true transformation comes from. So starting at the source, Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned as you walked us through a method soap. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, um, first of all, that there's different translations of the Bible and there's many that we can There's choose from. Can you explain those sure. to us? And how do I know which one to get if I'm Sure. And there? so, right. And because I said different things at the different services, let, let me just see if I can't try to capture the high points for everybody. Um, I encourage people who are new to Bible reading mm-hmm. uh, towards the more reader-friendly translations. Okay. Um, you basically have reader-friendly translations and uh, what you might call more of a scholarly word-by-word translation. So let me give an example. The 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 most uh, best-selling version of all time is called the NIV. That's a reader-friendly version. Um, another one in the last 15 years or 20 years has been the New Living Translation. That's a very Mm -hmm. reader-friendly. Eugene Peterson, 15 or 20 years ago, wrote The Message, which is very folksy. And um, you can't really go wrong with any of these, especially if you're brand new to God's Word. Let's just get you into His Word. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, other people, um, maybe who've been around a little bit longer uh, say, you know, I, I think I want more of a word by word translation than a thought by thought translation. Well, some of the, the more word by word translations would be the New American Standard. Um, that's a word by word. The English uh, Standard, ESV, uh, New King James Version, tends to be more that way. Is there a, a better and a worse? No, they're just different. Basically, um, th- this category, the bottom category, is going to be, uh, it's going to read a little choppier. Mm-hmm. It won't flow quite as well, uh, but it is superbly accurate uh, in translating from the original biblical languages. Uh, I wouldn't describe this as, as inaccurate by any means, but maybe uh, a word or two are shaved off just to capture the concept gotcha. uh, more clearly the way that we try to capture concepts, maybe when we're talking paraphrasing or talking to our children um, without going into quite the weeds. Another thing that I mentioned in one of the services, I think, but I, I don't think I covered it at all, is the, the benefit of what's called a study Bible. Now, the interesting thing about um, any of these translations is that you can get really most any of them in a study Bible, meaning what they're going to do is they're going to wrap uh, God's Word, we'll call the actual text, God's word, and then they'll put a little line here, and then on the bottom of each page, you'll have uh, notes Mm -hmm. where Bible scholars have come along and said, if you wanna understand verse 23, here's a little bit more of what verse 23 means, and here's a little bit more of what verse 24 means. And this can be real helpful, Mm -hmm. especially when we're new to reading God's word and we're like, 
I haven't any foggiest idea. What does that mean? To be able to go down to the corresponding verse and say, most scholars believe that this version, oh, that really helps me. So what kind of study Bible? Well, there's different types. There's the NIV study Bible is a classic study Bible. Uh, various famous pastors now even tend to make their own study. But yeah, I've seen the, the, the John MacArthur study Bible. Um, you've got the David Jeremiah study Bible. Um, and um, so you go to a Christian bookstore, you just look online under study. Bible, And you can get the study Bible typically in most any translation that you want because the notes are going to correspond uh, you know, pr pretty much. So you choose your translation, then you choose what what flavor of study Bible do you want? And and that right there is a big step mm -hmm. in helping people get traction Absolutely. who've who've never felt like like one lady I was talking to after service said, I'm so glad you did this because we bought our child a new Bible and it seemed like just almost overnight we were into kings and battles and we just got so confused by what's going on mm -hmm. and how does this fit into the big story and, and everything. And so this is a real helpful thing to, mm -hmm. to get some tools that can help us to understand, okay, where are we in the big flow of God's word? Because there is, you know, kind of this big flow, this big story that, that begins at creation uh, and then you have the cross, salvation, and then uh, and the, you know, it comes to the final end, the resurrection um, of the church where we go. And pretty much throughout the Old Testament, you're just getting more and more evidence mm -hmm. of the fall of man. You're seeing this person kill that person, this people kill that, that people. And it's just evidencing over and over how fallen we are. And then you get to Jesus uh, that's kind of where the New Testament starts. And you get his life in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then you get some of the other letters that come along mm -hmm. after that that give us guidance for the, the formation of our Christian journey and, and how to walk as a Christian. Um, so there is this story, but if you don't have some study notes, um, to help you when you get into some of the weedier books, it can be a little bit confusing, especially gotcha. in the Old Testament. All right. Okay, so, so I'm ready to do this. Mm -hmm. I've selected my version. Mm -hmm. I've got my Bible, mm -hmm. whether it's online, paper, I'm ready to go. I certainly can always do it um, online. As I start working through, how, how what's a good way to record what I'm learning sure. or my thoughts? Right, so uh, we talked about the, the importance of having a journal. And I've gone through different phases in my uh, life. For years, I just used a, a, a spiral notebook journal like you get in a grocery store. Um, and uh, then somebody gave me a nice leather bound uh, journal that had the pages in it. I've got the batch of those in my batch of those in my filing cabinets that I've used. Um, some years ago, I began to realize I actually do real well um, t t with typing. I've always been pretty good at that. And so I began to chronicle my devotions um, in a format electronically. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how I tend to do it. But you can't go wrong with any. In fact, uh, we have at the Resource Center what is called the Life Journal, which is basically a spiral notebook that also has the Bible reading plan that we passed out today in the bookmarks okay. all contained in one. Okay. And so um, if, you're, uh, if you're old school and you want something that you're holding in your hand, well, I mean, you hold your phone in, or your technology in your hand as well, but uh, if you want to turn the pages, that, uh, that's a good place to start. If, if you're more of an iPad or, or a laptop person, that can work great. Some people use Evernote or, you know, any number of other uh, programs that you can record it on. Okay. So you mentioned 
having a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk to me about that? How do sure. I how do I how do yeah. I find my my yeah. plan? Do so, I need to follow a plan? Yeah, you need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you you you, you plan to fail and fail a plan and all that stuff. So you you won't get very far. Uh, so there's a, uh, a, a an, an app called U Version, and um, the great thing about the YouVersion app is I bet they've got 500 or 800 or 1,000 different Bible reading plans. Mm-hmm. Um, just people who've come along and said, hey, this is what I just did for the past year or half year or three months, and I found this very helpful. Mm-hmm. And so you can you know jump on to their plan. Like I said in the sermon and even now, we've given a plan okay. that would give uh, the, give you what you need to get through the Bible in a year, because a lot of people say, especially here at the beginning of a year, I think I'd like to try to read the whole Bible. Okay, it'll be about four chapters a day, four plus chapters a day, mm-hmm. um, and it's certainly doable. Um, for those who say, I, you know, I've tried this a few times, I really don't want to fall off the wagon, um, I would say, well, just take that plan and just use the New Testament Mm -hmm. portion um, and just do the New Testament readings for a year. And we'll get back to the Old Testament and the Psalms and all that later. Um, But just do the New Testament portion. Um, That'll bring it down uh, a a little bit. I'll tell you some other things that um, there's a Bible church up in, uh, I want to say it's in, Pennsylvania, I think. I don't remember what it is, but they've put several of their plans on U version, and somehow I got onto one of them. And so then I got probing around and found some other plans that they've done with their congregation. Mm-hmm. And one of them is called Key uh, Themes in the Bible, and one of them is called Key Beliefs in the Bible. One of them called Key Characters in the Bible, and one of them was called, uh, wait, Themes, Beliefs, Characters, Events in the Bible. And the interesting thing about this is each of them are 90 day plans. And so together, there's a whole year if you were to use mm-hmm. uh, this. And Uh, Basically, you get one theme per week. So the theme uh, might be uh, the theme of grace. And so for those seven days, the Mm -hmm. texts are going to be... All lined up with... Exactly. They're going to be about grace. Um, And then the key beliefs, uh, you know, we believe in uh, the Bible. That maybe seven days worth for a week are going to be on... God's word, and it's a lamp unto our feet, and you know these kind of verses that be your, and then key characters like Noah, um, and uh, key events, and so this can even accomplish two things: it's getting you into the word every day, but it's also orienting you to uh, some categories that, with the, a year's time, can be helpful to have some handles for understanding. But I would encourage people just to spend uh, 20 or 30 or 45 minutes on version, just looking at some of these different uh, plans. Okay. Um, at some point or another, I do hope though that most people will take the challenge uh, to uh, read the whole thing. Um, and even if you spread that out over two years or spread that out over three years, that they'll get through and then that you do it again, because there really is something about uh, getting into the whole counsel of God. But don't try to take it all on in one day, like the funny video um, uh-huh. that Justin did over the holidays. So let me um, ask you a question. So you mentioned that there was a bookmark today that we gave out. Um, you mentioned that you could get the Life Journal. But if I wasn't here today where I don't prefer paper, can you show me on the FaithBridge app? where I can find the reading plan. Yeah, sure. So just go to FaithBridge app and to, if I can see here, Bible. 
So for example, awesome. you just go like, here's today's. Okay. Okay. So today's reading is um, Abraham, Genesis 20, 21, 22. That's your Old Testament reading. Now, if you're only gonna do New Testament, cause you say, I don't wanna bite off too much, uh, then you'll, you'll start down in Luke uh, chapter eight. See, the woman, uh, women who are accompanying Jesus and, and you get several of those. Um, and so it's a, it's, it's a shorter amount. And so there's today's and then you go to tomorrow's and just press it and boom, you're, it'll take you right there for right. your reading. And so another question that came in around this is, do you have a daily devotional or reading plan that you would recommend for your kids, possibly around your age or? This. This. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, if you can read and you can write, you can begin to S-O-A-P. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably not going to be published worthy, but <laughs> n neither will most of our devotions ever be. Um, but just teaching the, uh, your child, here's what we're going to read, mm -hmm. this little portion maybe of... Uh, let's start in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Can't go wrong if that's all you ever read forever. And I mean, there is more, but that will get you uh, way down the road spiritually if you could just get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John over and over and over into your soul um, and teach you the basics about Jesus. So you take a portion of that and uh, give your children a few minutes to, to read it and to write down a few of these thoughts and it's clumsy at first, but then you get a little bit better. And, um, so I'd say uh, this plan is a good one. Good, yeah. good. Um, what if you are brand new to Christianity, the whole idea of opening the Bible on your own, I don't, you're telling me where to start, but I'm not gonna understand what I read. And honestly, I, I just don't know. What, what are other yeah. places that I could start if I'm brand new at this it, yeah. and it feels overwhelming? Well, certainly our, uh, starting point class. Yep, we have two of those starting this month on the 29th. There you go, which is, how many weeks is that? That's an eight? That's a nine week class. Nine week mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. and that happens here uh, at our campuses mm -hmm. and on Sunday mornings mm -hmm. during one of the services. And so you could take part of that, mm -hmm. um, get signed up for one of our starting point classes. And then, I mean, Luann, what you spend a lot of, most of your time here on staff doing, mm -hmm. getting people into community. Yep. There's nothing like getting people into a small group uh, where you can be growing with some other brothers and sisters who know your name and you know their name. Mm -hmm. And you pray for them and they pray for you. And you can uh, learn so much from taking the journey with some other sisters and brothers. Yeah, you know, um, our grow group right now is doing the book of Matthew, and we have some relatively new believers in our group. And my leader said to me after the class, you know, they ask the best Always. questions. Yeah. And I said, yeah, because they honestly it's brand new. don't know. It's all brand new. And yeah. so they're causing even those of us who have been believers for longer to really answer the questions and look at it together. So don't feel intimidated if you feel like you're going to walk into a group and everybody already knows because yeah. we're all learning together. That's absolutely right. And that's such a good point. Um, you know, <laughs> I was talking about the soul today. And I think what your leader is pointing out is that in many ways, the newer Christian, the newer believer, or even the newly, I'm not quite a believer, but I think I'm about to become a believer. Um, in many ways, his or her soul is healthier than some, maybe a lot of us who've, we've been Christians a long time, and but uh, maybe there's been this big chasm that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And so what a wonderful thing when uh, a new soul comes in and is asking such good questions. It's like, you know, I know I wondered that 15 years ago or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm but I need to get back to wondering that and thinking about that and wrestling about that. So 
It's good. good. Well, this is a great way to start off the new year. Good. I'm looking forward to part two coming up next week. So yep. thank you for that. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.